Public Service Senate Administration Minister Nokolo Kivitz has assured South Africans that government work will continue unhindered no matter who takes over after the May elections. The minister says public servants will be protected from political interference and will serve the citizens. To discuss this further, I'm now joined by Professor Soma Dota Fikeni from the Public Service Commission. Prof, good to have you and thank you very much uh, for coming on this evening. Uh, what is the potential, uh, if, if there is any, for the instrumentalizing of public service for political purposes? In this case, the, the careers of public servants being potentially limited or completely destroyed because of change of hands uh, in terms of administration? The international convention, as well as a highly regulated public sector in South Africa, says the contract of public servants is not linked to the term of administration nor is it linked to the term of a minister or government of the time. It is stipulated, it is regulated, and as such, when there is a change of administration, the public service ought to be continuous in a sense and ought to provide professional, ethical support to any government of the day or minister of the day. Of course, there are instances where we've seen the change of ministers and then you begin to see a lot of instability. And it is for that reason that uh, in the past few days we met with the Minister of Public Service and Administration, Ms. Nautolo Kivit, uh, to discuss precisely this issue and we'll be meeting with the National School of Government and other role players and DPSA to say it is better to issue an instruction and a guide to people pointing to these regulations so that if there is a change of administration, change of ministers, yeah. we do not receive the cases that we normally receive where people think the change of politics usually leads to the change of people's positions with few exceptions, of course. Now, the oppositions, we are told, by other parties, for example, with the crisscrossing and the back and forth that happens at local municipalities, that they say are attached to political office, staff in the office of the mayor or staff in the office of the MMC or position of head of department and, and, and so on and, and so forth. Are, are those within that framework allowed then, therefore, to be attached to a particular uh, political uh, officer uh, that is in that post at the time? Those in terms of regulations are attached to the incumbent because they are in the private office of the public office bearer or the minister, the MEC, the premier, and they are listed as such. For example, a chief of staff and uh, a few other positions which will be listed there those are attached to the private office and as such when the contract of the incumbent ends it is stipulated that their contract will also end but this is the tiny tiny minority as i said there are exceptions in terms of the public service a dg a head of department which is different from the head of the private office will then continue with the work and it is for that reason that even in the recent approved framework for professionalization the dg term of office is being extended from five years to ten years of course with strict measures yeah. in terms of performance assessment as well as the management of the contract itself so i'm sure you are, you, you you would be aware there's a big fight at some point in 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 Twani around the municipal manager maybe even the cfo at, at at some point because those who were in government believed that because of their political affiliation were working against a system of government that would have then been voted in at that particular time how how does the 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 the, the legislation navigate that space it's very clear if any public official 
enter into the political space and they start frustrating any administration, they can actually take disciplinary actions against that particular individual, which is different from being appointed as such. Once you start playing an active role, you start entering into the fray, you favor this one, you don't want this one, you are frustrating this one, then you have violated the very contract that you have, that you should be apolitical, you should be supportive of the administration that is there. So a disciplinary process will take its course, and of course it should be factual, there should be evidence to that effect. Otherwise, if you have a summary dismissal, just because you suspect that this person may not be loyal, then uh, you'll be liable for the payment of contract for every other thing, or the person might go to the legal recourse and win the case and come back to the department. And, and so how, how do we monitor? How, do, how, how is that going to be monitored? And from your conversation with the minister, that strict separation of, of state from, from, from party. Uh, in, 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 in most times, it's been, it's been proven to be quite difficult. The first one, it's a proactive one. We've agreed that uh, a memo should be circulated where all these regulations and guides, the do's and don'ts, are sent around so that the DGs, HODs, and public servants, as well as the off public office bearers will be coming in and those who will be going out should be aware of what is there. Because there are instances in the going out where people may try to take the private office members and make them absorbed by the department without following processes. And that in itself is a challenge, and PSC has had to enter the fray in trying to resolve such issues in the past. So, I mean, we know one such case where a, a decision that was taken by a previous administration to um, extend contracts, I think over 160 workers in the Joburg Metro, uh, when the D administration came in, they, they cancelled that decision and said, no, those 160 were fired. They've since gone to court and, and the courts, of course, have said um, they, 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 they can be uh, reinstated and certainly those jobs continuing. But... I'm asking that to say there are decisions, for example, that are taken by previous administrations. When an administration comes into effect, or a new one or so, if it's a different, if it's in the opposition, does it have a right then to just cancel willy-nilly those decisions that would have taken as far as it affects uh, public servants? It, it shouldn't. Uh, it should. That is the reason why even before such an administration comes in, it is always important that the existing administration or the incoming administration visit the regulations as much as possible so that whatever decision they take, it's not just because of political expediency, but it's guided by laws. In a constitutional democracy, the beauty is that there is a recourse. If you feel you are unhappy, courts can decide against the existing laws to say what was the law, did you abide by it, or did you go around it? And it is equally important even for the incumbent uh, administrations to always consult, get as much consensus, but using the law so that even if there are changes, decisions will stay. You and I have heard this, and I'm sure this is a complaint that comes quite a lot to the Public Service Commission, of uh, employees being vetted of their political affiliations, want to get the job, but also for them to advance in a particular job. So chances of one being promoted, for example, to higher positions become slim if they are affiliated to a, a, a political organization that is not the one of the one in administration. How have you solved those cases as the commission? Any case that is brought to us, we look at the law. If the law was not followed, we simply uh, recommend that, that such a decision be reversed. I just want to be cautious here in a sense that at times we say 
there is a perception that these people might have been appointed on political grounds, which at times may have been the case. But what is key when it comes to the PSC is to look at whether the recruitment policies were followed and look at the facts. Of course, if it so happened to be something like ministers or public office bearers appointing people using that, then that we normally refer to the public protector, which deals with the executive authorities. With us, we deal with the public servants at national and provincial level. If the PSC bill is approved in and enacted, it will extend to local government as well. So that in itself, whenever we come across such a case, and there is proof that processes were not followed, we do not even care or look at which party and any other thing. Once there is impropriety, we simply reverse the decision. And finally, as, as, as we, 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 we let you go, I mean, one, one of the issues that, uh, uh, of course, we are faced with now during a campaign season is that public servants could probably be getting messaging, right, from political parties to say, look, if you don't vote for us and we, 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 we lose power, you're going to lose your jobs. Is that the, the space of the PSC or is that the space of the IEC? It is the space of the IEC if political parties use that because it will be violating the code. It is equally the space of the public protector should there be any indications that a public office bearer has done anything in that direction. Otherwise, the memo that we're going to release uh, is the one that should assure public servants that they are secured within their contracts and that they should work with whoever and be professional and ethical. And it is for that same reason that the framework for professionalization that has been approved, as well as the Public uh, Administration Management Act and uh, a, a range of other policy reforms are trying to delineate the roles of the public office bearers from the roles of the administration or public servants. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, our former commissioner.